It was so terribly cold. It snowed and snowed, and it was almost dark. It was also the last evening of the year, New Year's Eve. In the cold and darkness, a poor little girl with bare head and naked feet went along the streets. When she left home, it is true, she had had slippers on, but what was the use of that? They were very large slippers. Her mother had worn them till then. They were so big. And the little girl lost them as she hurried across the street to get out of the way of two carts driving furiously along. One slipper was not to be found again, and a boy had caught up the other and run away with it. He said he could use it for a cradle when he had children of his own. So the little girl had to go walking about in her little bare feet, which were red and blue with cold. She carried a lot of matches in an old apron and a box of them in her hand. No one had bought any from her the whole day. No one had given her a halfpenny. Hungry and shivering, she went along, poor little thing, a picture of misery. The snowflakes fell on her long yellow hair that curled so prettily on her neck, but she did not think of that now. Lights were shining in all the windows, and there was a tempting smell of roast goose. For it was New Year's Eve. Yes, she was thinking of that. In a corner formed by two houses, one of which projected a little beyond the other, she sat down and huddled herself together. She had tucked her little feet under her, but she felt colder and colder. She dared not go home, for she had not sold any matches, nor earned a single halfpenny. Her father would beat her, and it was cold at home too. They had only the roof above them, through which the wind whistled, although the largest cracks had been stopped up with straw and rags. Her little hands were almost dead with cold. Ah, oh, one little match might do her good, if she dared take only one out of the box, strike it on the wall, and warm her fingers. She took one out. Oh, how it sputtered and burned! It was a warm. Bright flame like a little candle when she held her hands over it. It was a wonderful little light, and it really seemed to the child as though she was sitting in front of a great iron stove with polished brass feet and brass ornaments. How the fire burned up, and how it warmed! But what was that? The little girl was already stretching out her feet to warm these two when. Out went the little flame. The stove vanished, and she had only the remains of the burned match in her hand. She struck a second one on the wall. It burned and gave a light, and where this fell upon the wall, it became transparent, like a veil. She could see right into the room. A white tablecloth was spread upon the table, which was decked with shining china dishes, and there was a lovely smell of roast. Goose stuffed with apples and prunes, and what pleased the poor little girl more than all was that the goose hopped down from the dish and came waddling across the floor straight towards her. Just at that moment, out went the match, and only the thick, cold wall was to be seen. So she lighted another match, and there she was sitting under the beautiful Christmas tree. It was much larger and more decorated than the one she had seen through the glass doors at the rich merchants. The green boughs were lit up with thousands of candles and gaily painted figures like those in the shop windows. The little girl stretched her hands out towards them, and out went the match. She could hardly wait till she lit another match, and she did. The Christmas candles rose higher and higher till they were the only stars in the sky. One of them fell, leaving a long, fiery trail behind it. Now someone is going to heaven," said the little girl, for her old grandmother, the only person who had ever been good to her and who had now passed on, had said that when a star falls, a soul goes up to heaven. She struck another match on the wall. It was a light at once, and in its glow stood her old grandmother, so dazzling and bright. And so kind and loving. 
Grandmother, cried the little girl. Oh, take me with you. I know that you will go away when the match is burned out. You will vanish like the warm stove, like the beautiful roast goose and the big splendid Christmas tree. And she quickly lighted the whole box of matches, for she did not wish to let her grandmother go. The matches burned with such a blaze that it was lighter than day, and the old grandmother had never appeared so beautiful or so tall before. Taking the little girl in her arms, she flew up with her in brightness and joy, high, so high, and there was no cold, nor hunger, nor sorrow, for they were in heaven. But in the corner by the houses, in the cold dawn, the little girl was still sitting with red cheeks and a smile upon her lips. The New Year's sun shone upon her brightly as the child sat stiffly holding her matches, of which a box had been burned. She must have tried to warm herself, someone said. No one knew what beautiful things she had seen, nor into what glory she had entered with her grandmother on the joyous New Year. It was New Year's Eve, and although it was terribly cold, and the snow fell, and the wind howled, people hurried happily along the dark street on their way home to the fine dinners of roast goose and all the other wonderful things to eat. Standing barefooted and shivering against a wall was a little match girl. In her apron she held bundles of matches for sale. But none of the happy people who hurried past stopped to buy any. She hadn't sold a single package of matches all day long. How cold her hands felt. If only she dared to take one of the matches from a bundle and rub it against the wall and warm her hands at the flame. Oh, how good that would feel. Before she knew it, she had slipped out a match and rubbed it against the wall. And it made a wonderful light, so warm and so cozy. It seemed now to the little match girl as though she sat in front of a great warm stove in which a splendid fire roared and sang. And then suddenly, poof, it was all gone. And it was once more cold and dark and miserable. Quickly, she rubbed the second match against the wall. And again, the warm, happy light flared up. But this time, the wall behind her seemed to melt away and she could look into the room beyond it. And the room was set for a gorgeous New Year's feast with a big roast goose on the table and piles of fresh baked bread and pies and cakes. Hmm. It was so warm and smelled so good when poof, out went the match. And once again, the splendid vision vanished. Oh, she could hardly get the next match out quickly enough. And with trembling fingers that were blue with the cold, she struck the match against the wall. This time, this time she was sitting under a great, beautiful Christmas tree, glowing with lights and shining ornaments. Oh, it was breathtaking. Eagerly, the little girl stretched her hands out to touch the wonderful tree, and poof! It too was gone. All that was left was the wind and the snow and the awful cold which seemed colder now than ever. She dared not waste another match and yet, what could she do? Just one more, that would be all. Just one more, she promised herself. Went the match and it became bright again. 
And in all the brightness her dear, dead grandmother stood clear and shining, mild and lovely. Grandmother, cried the child, oh, take me with you. I know you will go when the match burns out. You will vanish like the warm fire and the warm food and the great glorious Christmas tree. And she quickly rubbed the whole bundle of matches because she wanted her grandmother to stay. The matches burned with such a glow that it was brighter than the middle of the day. And the grandmother took the little match girl in her arms and both flew in brightness and joy above the earth very, very high, up to where there was neither hunger nor cold. They were in heaven. And when the frozen little match girl was found the next morning, no one knew or could even imagine what a beautiful thing she had seen and to what a glorious new home she had gone with her grandmother on that New Year's Eve. Thank you.